From UFOs to ghosts and psychic powers, history is riddled with unexplained events. You can turn back now and learn the stuff they don't want you to know. Here are the facts. The world is a crowded place, and it's full of food. Each day, almost 7 billion people try to grab a few hot meals. Not all of them are successful, but it's not because there isn't enough food to go around. Earth has been producing more and more food each year. Scientists and companies like Monsanto constantly search for new ways to raise efficiency, increase production, and lower the cost of growing food. By combining and modifying the genes of plants to withstand pesticide and disease, companies produce super crops that grow more quickly, produce more food, and arguably cost less than natural crops. From a business perspective, this strategy is quite successful. Monsanto controls more than 90% of the world's seed genetics. Yet some people object to this modified food and to Monsanto in particular. In fact, they say, if we knew more about this so-called miracle food and the effects it has on society, then we wouldn't want to eat it at all. Here's where it gets crazy. Critics make several claims against GM food and Monsanto. These critics are not all conspiracy nuts with tinfoil helmets. They're people like Dr. Helen Wallace and Professor Brian Wynn, two former members of the EU Food Standards Agency. They resigned in protest of the agency's pro-GM stance. Dr. Wallace said the FSA was acting as a puppet of the GM industry. It's true that powerful government agencies across the globe support GM food. It's also true that GM food is a relatively new development. There is no large-scale, long-term study on the effects of every GM crop. How do these plants affect the consumer and the environment over decades? And GM crops are a work in progress. They continue to evolve. As researchers refine modification techniques, they are able to tailor seed lines with increasing precision. For example, Monsanto's Roundup Ready crop is specifically tailored to resist the pesticide Roundup, which is also owned by Monsanto. Organizations like the Institute for Responsible Technology argue that the science behind gene therapy is inherently unpredictable and unsafe. After all, just because a foreign gene behaves a one way in its native DNA does not mean it will have the same behavior in another plant. And that's not the whole problem. Many people also allege that Monsanto engages in illegal business practices. Across the United States, farmers like Percy Schmeiser say that Monsanto has framed them for theft. Here's how it works. Since Monsanto owns the patent on GM seeds and crops, a farmer caught with these plants growing in his or her field will be considered guilty of stealing, regardless of how the GM plant ended up there. In the documentary The Future of Food, Mr. Schmeiser tells a disturbing story of Monsanto agents purposely planting these crops on his land and returning to take legal action against him. Most farmers in these situations settle with the company, but allege that Monsanto wants to make all crops one of their patented seed lines. Monsanto has also been accused of forcing farmers in post-war Iraq to use Monsanto seeds, and in countries across the world local farmers protest this company. It gets even crazier. To anti-Monsanto researchers like Cassandra Anderson, Monsanto's actions go beyond the profit motive of big business and tie in with the larger scheme to depopulate the globe. The argument is this, that Monsanto, the UN, and the US government are cooperating to propagate crops with a built-in terminator gene that renders seed lines sterile, necessitating the purchase of new seeds each year. While this may seem like a move intended to make more money by forcing farmers to buy seed, activists believe it gives Monsanto control of the world's food supply. Without seeds, billions of people would eventually starve. So what exactly is going on? Monsanto is still involved in legal disputes with farmers and rival companies. After all, it's not the only seed game in town. At least, not yet. It is true that homogeneity is bad for food security. But it's also true that innovations in the production of food have enabled our society to exist. So what's driving this push for genetically modified food? Is it a profit motive for companies like Monsanto and an issue of security for world governments? Or is this push for a food supply with a built-in kill switch part of something else? Something bigger? Something they don't want you to know? Prepared meats are American favorites. Favorites for convenience, favorites for nutrition, and favorites for flavor. 
prepared meats are easy to serve and good to eat. They are enjoyed by almost everyone, everywhere, every day.